The newest adaptation of Stephen King's It took a few creative liberties with the story setting and events, so it's probably no surprise that some of the characters described in the 1986 novel don't come through quite the same as they'd been written. Although the losers and their nemesises certainly carry the spirit of the source material through to the big screen, let's take a look at how they stack up to the book's original descriptions. Bill Denbro. Jaden Lieberherr was previously seen in Midnight Special and Showtime's Masters of Sex before becoming Bill Denbro for It. Bill, also known as Stuttering Bill, is the de facto leader of the Losers Club and is described as having a goofball grin and anxious blue eyes. He's also the tallest and most authoritative member of the group. After the group's childhood years, he'd later be compared to a teenage JFK for his reddish hair. On screen, Lieberherr looks quite different than the Bill described in the book. He's not particularly taller or more imposing than the others, but he still makes it clear he's the one who's lost the most and has the most at stake down in the sewers. He doesn't have Book Bill's shock of red hair either. Considering he manages to pull off Bill's passion for the Pennywise chase, however, it still works. Richie Toger Stranger Things star Finn Wolfhard doubled down on his 80s horror appeal by starring as Richie Toger, the scrawny, bespectacled kid who makes up for what he lacks in size with zingers. In the book, Richie is described as having such oversized teeth that he earns the nickname Bucky Beaver and has lenses so thick that he'd be blind without them. Those glasses are also constantly being broken, dropped, kicked, and bent in the book, and they're almost always lopsided and mended with tape, and his mouth constantly gets him into trouble, which is what earns him the childhood nickname Trash Mouth. Since most of the book's physical descriptions of Richie revolve around his glasses and chompers, Wolfhard is halfway there to perfection. He might not have those prominent teeth, but his specs and sass are definitely on point. Ben Hanscom Relative newcomer Jeremy Ray Taylor may be familiar to fans of the Marvel Universe thanks to his role as a bully in Ant-Man. In It, however, he made a change of pace by playing Ben Hanscom, the boy who's actually on the receiving end of so many taunts. Ben is described as wearing very loose-fitting clothes because of the constant ridicule he receives for his weight. Inside, he's a very sweet, intelligent, and dependable dude, but all anyone can see when they look at him is his size. He's estimated to weigh around 150 to 160 pounds and seems quite insecure about his appearance. In the role, Taylor pulls off not just the physical attributes of Ben, but the emotional presence of the character as well. Beverly Marsh Sophia Lillis is a relative newcomer to the movie business, but fans of It won't soon forget her name. Starring as Beverly Marsh, the lone lady of the Losers Club, Lillis manages to bring forth some of the subtler qualities of her character that hadn't quite been seen in the 1990 TV miniseries adaptation. In Stephen King's original version, Beverly is described as being less financially fortunate than the others, a fact that comes through in her wardrobe, with her thrift store clothes and scuffed shoes. From the boy's perspective, she's described as being very pretty with hair that is long and auburn, eyes that are grayish green, and a pale complexion. She's also got a smattering of freckles and a smile that is seen as being, quote, wise, cynical, and sad all at the same time. For all those reasons, Lilith's casting is essentially perfect. Although her long hair does look a little false in the beginning of the movie, she still pulls off the look with convincing poise. More importantly, she captures the subtle strength and world weariness that made the character such a force in the novel. I can take that. Eddie Kasprak. Jack Dylan Grazer capped a brief string of early supporting roles with a part of Eddie Kasprak, one of Bill's longtime closest friends and a charter member of the Losers Club. Most of King's descriptions of Eddie center around his asthma. Plagued by his helicopter mom, he's small, slight, and fragile, even as an adult, when his face is described as thin and delicate looking. Eddie doesn't get much of a physical description in the book, so there weren't many ways the filmmakers could go wrong. While Grazer's Eddie looks entirely different than the 1990s version, he still captures his character's apparent frailties while still being a lot stronger than he looks. Mike Hanlon Hawaii 5 -O vet Chosen Jacobs traded the tropics for Maine when he took on the role of It's Mike Hanlon. A farm kid growing up on the outskirts of town, Mike is from the only black family in Derry and is constantly tormented by Henry Bowers and his bully crew. As described in the book, Mike has been toughened up by physically laborious work and is fast, agile, and slim. Jacobs is a brilliant casting choice for Mike. Not only does he have the big, tough farm kid physicality in play, but he also has an emotional vulnerability that makes his narrative arc so much more interesting to watch unfold. Stan Uris. You might recognize Wyatt Olaf as the young Star-Lord in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. 
But there's no doubt everyone will remember him now as Stanley Uris from It. In the book, Stanley is described as having black hair and a nose that doesn't quite suit the stereotype for a person of the Jewish faith. He's also a little older than the other children due to being held back a grade as a kid. Olaf's version doesn't have the black hair that Stan's described to have in the novel, but he does have the fussy mannerisms, neatness, and sense of shaken faith down to a science. Henry Bowers its secondary antagonist, Henry Bowers, is only 12 in the book, but he looks much bigger to the losers because of the fact that he's flunked enough to still be in their same grade. Unlike the film, which moves the action to the 80s, the book is set in the 50s, and Henry is the embodiment of the prototypical bully from that era, with a flat-top haircut, a pink motorcycle jacket, and the physical wear of his father's heavy hand. For the 2017 version, Nicholas Hamilton's Henry Bowers got a complete wardrobe overhaul to match the new time period, and instead of the slick hairstyle, he sports a mullet. The new Henry Bowers is just as classically mean as prior versions, though, so that's what counts. Patrick Hochstetter Although Henry Bowers was bad enough, his sidekick Patrick was really horrible at his core. Played by Owen Teague from Bloodline and Black Mirror, Patrick is the student who triggers a whole different level of fear in those he terrorizes with his wandering hands and pencil case full of dead flies. In the novel, he's heavy set with a slack and pallid moon face. One of his teachers even describes him as a big lump of clay that had been crudely fashioned to look like a boy. He's also the kind of completely deranged guy who would murder his infant brother in his crib. Teague, who already had a slew of credits to his name, looks nothing like the heavyset expressionless preteen in the book, and in the film version, the essence of the character has been dialed down dramatically to the point that he's really no more than a schoolyard bully with an aerosol fire gun. Pennywise Although he's scary in his own right, Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise represents a significant visual change from the novel. His new costuming was inspired by Elizabethan and medieval-era clown and jester costumes rather than the baggy silver suit with orange buttons that's described in King's book. King also describes him as having yellow eyes and reminds poor Georgie of Bozo the Clown. He's later compared to Ronald McDonald for his painted white face and massive smile. And in addition to his long, sharp teeth, he's also mostly bald, except for an orangish-red tuft of hair on each side of his head. The Pennywise of the movie doesn't quite resemble what King originally imagined, but he's still the kind of clown you wouldn't want to run across at a carnival. So it works. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.